Welcome to today's episode of Cryptomaniac, where we decode the crypto space all together to find out what's new and going on every single day. And today, just looking at the markets really briefly, it's nice to see everything in the green. So yesterday was a good day, today continues to be a good day, so was at the bottom, hopefully. Um, but of course, as we mentioned yesterday, and everybody was talking about uh, China putting a stop to ICOs. So that definitely sent a shockwave through the crypto community. And particularly Ethereum got hit hard. And so I wanted to talk a little bit specifically about Ethereum today. And it's a slightly awkward position. Uh, everybody has been really excited, I think, for the last few years now. Um, but it's had its moment in the sun and strangely, even despite the attention that it's been getting over the last little while now, um, it's kind of left in this awkward spot. So I wanted to kind of go through a few things. But first of all, let's talk about Raiden Network. So Raiden or Raiden as some call it, Raijin is the Japanese god of thunder and lightning. So that's where I came from. I did a little bit of digging. So Raiden is Ethereum scaling solution. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, of course, being a bit of a victim of their own success. Uh, the scaling has become such an issue because the network's just become so clogged up and no transactions go through. If no transactions go through, it makes the network and the whole idea not really all that valuable. So that is a huge, huge obstacle to overcome. And now that SegWit has been activated on the Bitcoin chain, the Lightning Network is hopefully right around the corner. Uh, we've seen some action on Litecoin, so that looks really positive for the future of Bitcoin. And fast transactions for very, very low fees. So as I mentioned, Raiden, or Raiden is the scaling solution for Ethereum. And the whole hoopla about that is that uh, it's supposed to be able to process millions of transactions per second, which even companies like Visa can't even rival. So that is really, really great news. Aside from that, we can also see this is their GitHub. So for the Raiden network, and uh, we see that there's a lot of action leading up to around the time of right now, July into August, now into September. So that is great news to see. So I thought it would be an interesting idea to just spend a little bit of time talking about Ethereum and why it might be a particularly interesting investment opportunity right now. So just looking at the chart, historically, obviously it had this massive bull run from February, March of this year, where it was around the 12, 13, $15 mark, all the way up to reached up and touched $400 before coming, crashing all the way back down to 140 something, 130 something, depending on the exchange. And so we reached up and touched this 400 mark again, but because of the Chinese ICO situation, it's taken a big hit and over just a series of a few days of the daily chart, we lost again, well over a third of its value again, and we're on our way up a little bit. But one of the interesting things that I think I wanted to talk about right now is mostly the state of Ethereum. So at around the point where Ethereum did reach up and touch that $400 mark, we had this event here, which this shows the relationship of the dominant cryptocurrencies in the space right now. So of course, this big orange mark here represents Bitcoin. And if you scroll down here, you can see what all the different colors are and you can take them out and put them back in. But uh, Ethereum is this little blue line right here. And then we approached this thing that we were calling the flippening, which came to a head around here and it looked absolutely certain that Ethereum was for sure going to take over Bitcoin in dominance in the space. But then suddenly that just plain never happened and Ethereum got wildly overheated. But in this run up, Ethereum had so much news, it was unbelievable to think that it could ever possibly go back down, but of course it had to, right? So now that we're on the other side of this flippening event, it's getting more and more distant as Bitcoin has taken on SegWit and now Bitcoin is reaching all new highs and Ethereum has just reached up and touched that old high again, but it's having definitely a little bit of trouble breaking out of that. So as we now start to approach that old high again, where Bitcoin has already reached up and touched 5,000, uh, where initially the old high had only been 3,000, that is a significant change. And so there's been a lot of talk about Bitcoin and definitely the news articles to come out about Ethereum have definitely been overshadowed by Bitcoin and a lot of other new ICOs and other platforms that have come out. EOS has made a lot of noise in this space recently as far as one of a couple of platforms that could potentially overtake Ethereum. 
That said, there's just so much interest and so much backing Ethereum that it's hard to imagine it not doing well in the future. There are some huge companies behind it and we've got DevCon 3 coming up in November in Cancun, Mexico. We've got Consensus Nation of Mauritius in talks to create Ethereum Island. That was news a while ago. I haven't heard much about it since. And we've got this Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which has partnerships with it like Deloitte. It's got Santander. It's got JP Morgan, ING, Microsoft, Toyota, MasterCard, and the list just goes on and on. And there are new companies being added to it all the time. So even though Ethereum might seem like it's a little bit on the expensive side, again, again, in just relation to where we're sitting right now, just below an all-time high, over time, there's so much development going on and there's such a humongous community behind it that some of these new platforms just don't have behind it yet. Could it get overtaken in the future by something radically different and wildly innovative? Yes, of course it could. That could happen at any time to any company in the world. But there's just so much driving this right now and I feel like as much noise as people are making about Ethereum right now, it could be a lot more and I think that there's gonna be a lot more to come. Again, Metropolis is expected to hit somewhere end of this month. So all of these things I think could potentially propel Ethereum to really great new highs. And so with everything going on right now in the crypto space, it's difficult to know where our eggs are best served, in which basket. And so I think it's worth considering then Bitcoin as the tried and true historical monster of the crypto world that has continued to grow exponentially over time. Ethereum, of course, has a much shorter history, but is showing ridiculous promise, which is really nice to see. But then there's the question, do I go in a little bit more weighted on the Bitcoin side or do I try to allocate a little bit more to the Ethereum side hmm. in hopes that that technology really does come to fruition and really proves itself? And maybe there might even be a flippening in the future. Who knows? All of that said, of course, I think it's worth considering even not going along with the idea of who is going to be the big winner in the future. It is very possible because they do different things that they will both continue to grow in the future. Naturally, this is not trading advice. You're responsible, of course, for your own decisions. And that is gonna look a little bit different for each person. But let me know your thoughts. Are you excited about everything that's coming down the line for Ethereum? Do you think it's a little bit underrated? Do you think it's getting a little bit hot still? Are you a bigger Bitcoin or Ethereum fan? Or are you also divided and a big fan of both equally at the same time? Let me know in the comments below and we'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.